Mercedes Garcia, Mercedes Garcia, if you can't roll the R, you can also say Merck. Um, I really am so happy and thrilled to be here. Thank you to Startup and U of A Forge for hosting us and Liz and all that you do for helping young entrepreneurs. I like to think that Startup and all of us are a part of uplifting indigenous communities um, through this work together. I am the owner and founder of the International Native Nations Network. Um, it's a consulting agency. I like to more describe what I do as community building and organizing. I work with native communities, native organizations to help them design thriving communities based and rooted in culture, connection, and language. I'm currently about to launch a nonprofit as well, which we'll talk about later. But I'm so thrilled to talk about Sanctuary in Action, um, what I call Sanctuary in Action, and what to me really is speaking truth to power. Um, and I hope today offers you a little bit of curiosity about yourself, about what sanctuary means to you, what sanctuary means in community. I hope that it leaves you with some perspective and an opportunity to practice speaking truth to power. I asked people, similar to what we did this morning, what sanctuary meant to them. These are the responses. I asked like 20 to 30 people, all different ages, backgrounds, identities, all the things. Overwhelmingly, which is unsimilar to the responses today, most folks um, described the sanctuary as a spiritual, religious, holy place. Um, and then were the kind of some of the responses having to do with safety, protection, refuge. And the last kind of response was calmness and peace, feeling at peace. Um, the, the one in the middle there, most people don't think of it as internal happiness, uh, was a response by a 25-year-old young man, which really spoke to me, because that's what really sanctuary is to me. It's a grounding and a rooting within yourself to be able to have as a touchstone when you encounter hate, when you're doing the good work that you do. I really want to thank you all for being here today. As creative people, what you do is so important. Creative people are the innovators, uh, the change makers, the people who speak truth to power, who inspire change. So I think it's so important that we all find our sanctuary within ourselves to fill our cups, to enable us to continue to speak truth to power. Because honestly, the patriarchy, the systems of oppression that are set up to not allow people like me to thrive, who are othered. If you're not a member of the dominant majority uh, class or a male, straight male in the country, like the system is not really set up for you. And that's the reality that we live in. And it's a little bit about what I wanna talk about because when I thought, when I heard the responses, I'm gonna go back to this. When I heard the responses from people talking about spirituality and religion and a holy place, that to me translated to connection. People seek to be connected and to have community. When people talked about wanting to feel safe and secure, I want all of us to think about this. Some of us, a lot of us in this room walk around in spaces often, maybe a lot of times in our day, where we don't feel safe either to speak, we may not feel physically safe, to say what you want, to wear what you want. So keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this and talk about sanctuary in action. When folks who talked about wanting or thinking of sanctuary as peace or calmness, what that really spoke to me about is that, and it's really true, we walk through our lives really reacting to the system that we live within, right? It takes a lot to stop, pause, reflect, and ground ourselves, whether it be to a story, to a teaching, to knowledge, to who you are as a person, to be able to act and respond in sanctuary and goodness. I know that all of us are good people and want to do good with the creativity that we have and that gift that you have. So, I hope that you keep those things in mind as we talk about an opportunity to cultivate. And I really talk about cultivating more as excavating sanctuary within your heart and within your mind. Because it's a two approach, two piece approach, I think. I think in our society today, it's really difficult 
to talk about needing something. So I think we first need to be aware that we might need something to ground us. We might need something to turn to when someone is spitting some really crazy things in your face, right? Because you want to respond in love and goodness. Sometimes I don't. Like, no, <laughs> facts. Sometimes we do not do that. And that is fine. Um, sometimes it's not, we have to, right? Our physical safety is at risk if we don't. So I think knowing, first of all, and I use these awareness, authenticity, and accountability to excavate a little bit of sanctuary within your heart and within your mind. And I say excavate because you really have to dig deep because we live in a society where we're responding to everything that's happening around us instead of looking within ourselves to be authentic and who we are, right? And so I have the quote, there's a lot of quotes on these slides. I'm not gonna read them all. Most of them um, are by great female leaders that I love um, and Dr. Angela Davis. And the second thing about being aware is that you don't know everything about others. And we don't know a lot of things about each other um, as people, as humans, as cultures, those kinds of things, but also just day to day. I don't know what kind of things you came in here today with. I don't know what kind of things you're grieving, what kind of things you're hopeful for. And all of those things impact how we engage with one another and whether we connect. And I, for me, sanctuary is connection. And this right here is sanctuary to me. This is filling my cup. I hope in return, I am filling your cup so that you can go out there and continue to do what you do. Because what you do is imperative to change this world and make it better. I truly believe that just being inspired with those pitches, amazing. This is Sloney Baloney. Um, as you're going through this process of excavation, I urge you to embody Sloney Baloney. Um, she's one of my best friend Kendall's daughters. She, Kendall worked really hard to find names for her kids that other kids wouldn't make fun of. And they called her Sloney Baloney. <laughs> but Sloney Baloney owns it. This is how she introduces herself. And she is courageous and vulnerable. I think courage is oftentimes framed as being something like heroic and like putting your life on the line for somebody, which that's amazing. Thank you to our service members. But it's also just being vulnerable. And connection requires vulnerability. And filling your cup requires being vulnerable and courageous. So own it and be like Sloan as you're going through this process. <laughs> Sanctuary and feeling and being authentic. A big part for my excavation as to what sanctuary is to me is figuring out how important love is to my sanctuary. And that doesn't mean all of you have to love me or love each other necessarily. I say this a lot to teams I work with. I use this definition a lot because you don't have to love each other. You don't have to love me. But we can know that we all care, that we are committed to certain things or a certain kind of world that we can learn from one another, be respectful, and trust one another, and that we have a responsibility to do that with one another, right? So I think being authentic to what really, really fills your cup, is it dance? Is it going to the gym? Is it really just not going out on Friday night and staying home? Like, be authentic to what you need and don't be afraid to embody things that society often views as weak like being kind, like wanting to do good. I think we value too much making money. And now I think we're shifting toward social entrepreneurship and innovation and really making those two things go hand in hand, which is what I'm all about. But a big part for me also is contribution and reciprocity and understanding what that means. Having a, a uh, ability to fill your cup while you fill my cup so that we can both continue to do that, what we do. Um, for me, I believe my creativity comes in figuring out ways to mess up the government and help, <laughs> honestly, just point blank, and help pe empower people to live their lives the way that they know is best for them. I truly believe that all of our communities, indigenous people, all of our other black and brown communities, our communities know best what is best for us, not some grant application, not a bunch of like things that we're supposed to meet. Like those things don't take into account that some of us are 200 years behind the starting line because of the system you're trying to make me operate in, right? So <laughs> thank you. 
So that contribution, even when I'm in the middle, like I work in really difficult spaces sometimes. I work with families or teams who work with families who are sometimes w working with them at the worst times in their lives when they're getting their kids taken away. They're going through the criminal injustice system. Ooh, excuse me. My water is over there. <laughs> Not here. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Um, excuse me. Thank you. So I think what's important is that contribution is what grounds me. It's what refuels me. It's what allows me to have difficult conversations like the one I'm going to have with the state of Montana after this, this conversation today. And speaking truth to power, telling people when they're not following the law and hurting people that I love and care about. This is a community in North Central Montana. Shout out to Fort Belknap, Fort Belknap Indian Reservation. Oh, excuse me, guys. Um, they are uh, people of Assiniboine and Grovant tribes, and they gave me my start in business. They're my first contract, so I love them. And they are a big part of my sanctuary, as is this guy. So when I was invited to talk about sanctuary, I came to realize that I spent 27 years learning about what sanctuary was for my grandfather. And one thing that he always talked about is being accountable for the opportunities that you've been given. I like to think about, like Jen described my bio, read my bio and talked about the Western accomplishments. I look at my Western education as a vehicle to do the work that I care about, which is community to build and empower. It is not something I hold a great value in, except that it gets me into rooms and spaces that I would not otherwise get into. But I think that a lot of us, what stops us from excavating our hearts and mind into understanding what sanctuary is for us is that once we know that we can access these things, once we know that we walk among people who often don't feel safe or brave to be able to say what they want to say or express themselves, once we know that, we're accountable to do something about it, right? And that right there, honestly, I think is what stops most people from excavating and finding that within yourself. And I urge you to not let that stop you because excavating and finding those things that ground you, sometimes it's a story, sometimes it's a song, a place, a person, finding those things and identifying them and what they contribute to you and how they fill your cup is so important because then you can understand what a difference you make in an everyday basis as you walk around living with all the world and interacting with all the people that you meet. I talk about compassion and connection a lot. This is a definition from the dictionary of empathy or of compassion. Um, differentiating it from empathy. And it really talks about the desire to alleviate another person's distress as that differentiating factor between empathy and compassion. The photo there where I'm in the jean jacket is I'm standing with the director of Red Lake Nation's Child and Family Services, um, Obi Mendoa, which they don't call their department Child and Family Services. They call it uplifting our relatives. Um, and so Sherry tells her team, she reminds me often, and I will share it with you, that we are the haves, right? We are the haves. And a lot of times, the communities with whom we work, the people with whom we encounter on an everyday basis out on the street, are the have-nots. And we have a duty to bring everybody along with us because leaving people behind is not who we are as people. It's definitely not who we are as indigenous people. And I know that for many other communities and people, it's not who you are. And so I urge you to excavate, to dive deep into the process so that we can create more connection and understanding and compassion. I look at sanctuary in action. So once we've done those three steps, hopefully we get to a place where we can practice sanctuary in action, speaking truth to power, which I look as an action for yourself to fill your cup, enable you to keep doing what you're doing, and in action for humanity or community. Um, Dr. Angela Davis talks about how we often do the work of the state by failing to do 
what I'm talking about today. By failing to identify within ourselves what grounds us, what we need to connect to, to be better to one another, we do the work of the state. And I don't like the government. The government has never been good to me or my people. So I urge you to not continue to uphold colonial systems of oppression and put yourself second, especially for women. Like there's a reason that they come for, kill the woman first in indigenous communities. There's a reason they sterilize us. It's because we teach the culture, we teach the language, we teach the food, we teach the relationships that happen in our communities. For women in all our communities, and I truly believe that women are the change makers, the, starty, the starters of change, and the othered. When I say women, I also mean the othered. Like we are all othered in some way or another. You don't have to be a woman to be othered. You don't have to identify with any particular gender to be othered. And I think that we are the change makers and the innovators. And it's imperative for us especially to do this work. I have so many girlfriends, I have so many kids, and I love all the kids. You saw one of them. And I urge them to do this, to show their daughters that this is what you need to do in order to fill your cup. Because it affects our bodies. It literally affects our bodies to be stressed out and not know what grounds us and relaxes us and calms us. And we encounter too much hate too much nonsense. Like I can't even go to the grocery store without like Harry yelling at me for speaking Spanish. She always has a comeback, so don't be worried. But like, I don't need to deal with that. Like, I don't need to deal with that. And that, that is a reality for many people, right? So I have to have something, literally something, using my native purse right now, my Indian purse. This is a handkerchief. Everyone, my friends often wonder why I have a handkerchief. My grandpa carried this particular handkerchief. Sometimes my sanctuary is reaching in my purse and having something to clutch to so I don't punch Larry in the face, <laughs> right? <laughs> honestly, honestly. Or so I don't say something hateful because I'm not a hateful person, I'm not. And you're not gonna take me to a place of hate because you're ignorant. And I will school you and spread my knowledge I have some sanctuary and shutting you down and grip this. <laughs> so I, I mean, it's anything. I really think broaden your perspective of what sanctuary is. It's not a place. I was kind of really shocked how many people thought it was a place-based association. I think that young man's name is John who said it's inner peace. I think John got it correct. If you can cultivate that and excavate it within yourself, I think you'll be a happier human and I think that you'll live and make a, create a better world. And your creations, your art, whatever it is, is gonna be so much better and so much more inspirational. I truly, truly believe that. I truly believe everybody in this room has so much power. Art is the most powerful tool. I truly believe that music, song, I hope you guys like the music out there. That was a lot of native music, a lot of music. That's my sanctuary. That's stuff I listen to in the morning when I get ready. Um, I hope it helps. I truly believe songwriting, music making, photography, we just heard about comic books. Those things change kids' lives. They change kids' lives, I've seen it, right? And I love that I get to talk to all of you because as creative people, it took me a long time to call myself creative because I work in an area, I'm a lawyer, I'm an attorney by training, but <sighs> that's not very creative unless your defense attorney, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> um, it isn't very creative, though. It doesn't offer you that. So I really love writing. I've always loved writing. I love teaching people to write in different ways for different purposes. And I think writing is a tremendous artistic outlet that changes kids' lives. My, I work a lot with child and family uh, programming, development teams. I love, and my big passion is foster youth. Um, I think those kids are the change makers of the future. And anything that we can do to support youth after care, out of home care is phenomenal. So I give it up to all of you who are talking about that. I wanna share a little bit of my sanctuary. Um, it's very simple. Food, tradition, my mom, 
um, teaching kids about who they are. Because let me tell you something, knowing who I am, knowing exactly where I come from, the fact that I'm of this place that we all get to walk around, knowing that is tremendously powerful and grounding and sanctuary. Teaching other kids about that so that they have that same feeling is incredibly fulfilling. So I urge you to think about it like that. And love, I always express love even in the press, like the face of hate. Sometimes I fail, but failing is okay. Um, the public library sanctuary, um, I urge all black and brown communities to encourage youth to work in public library spaces. We're really lucky in this city that we have an incredible public library system. My mom is a public librarian, so shout out Pima County Library. <laughs> But really, what it is is that that's sanctuary for a lot of people, the public library. For unhoused people, I worked a lot with unhoused populations. It's sanctuary. And they, we deserve, other populations, we deserve to see people who look like us when we go into a place of sanctuary. I truly believe that. So please encourage your kids to become librarians and read. Public librarians. Um, a big part of my sanctuary is honoring so I really appreciate Creative Mornings giving a land acknowledgement and talking about all the tribes and really bringing light to that. And I know that they do that not just as an acknowledgement, but truly inviting people like me to speak with you here today is putting that acknowledgement into action. So I like to do the same. I work with the Op-Ed Project. I love the Op-Ed Project. They're an organization that believes in uplifting underrepresented voices by helping get op-eds published, um, which often leads to thought leadership and other kinds of spaces. Um, please, please, please sign up. Even if you're not a writer, even if you think you're not a writer, that code, if you go to that website and just mention in the comments that you heard me talk and mention my name, it's a $450 class, guys. It's for Saturdays, the next one, which is really cool for brown populations because often can't participate in those two-day middle-of-the-week ones. I really encourage you to do it there. One of their models is, I think it was on this slide, actually, yeah. Whoever tells the story writes history. So it's really important to get our voices out there because, like I said, only our communities know that's what we need, right? And we need to get that out there and to the public. Um, some locally owned places and nakaschool.org at the bottom, my business partner, it's a community school in Albuquerque for indigenous youth. It has one of the highest high school graduation rates in the country. They teach indigenous languages, land-based healing and learning. It's an amazing, amazing school. The National Indigenous Women's Resource Center does a lot of work with missing and murdered indigenous women and relatives, as well as the AILC, the American Indian Legal Law Center. They were a big part of how I became an attorney. So shout outs to all of those folks. Also, in the spirit of land acknowledgement, if you text that number on the top, you'll find out whose land you're on. It's a project out of Canada. So the last thing I want to leave you with are some key takeaways about how you go through this process of accessing sanctuary in action and accessing sanctuary within yourself. And the first one is to really figure out what you need. What, does, what do you need to fill your cup to enable you to continue to create and to enable you to be able to speak truth to power? Being honest about that and who you are authentically will really truly help you to connect with what fills your cup and allow you to continue to do the work that you do. So I encourage you fervently to do that in an honest way um, and be nice to yourself as you go along this process. We are not always, myself included, going to respond respectfully and tactfully to racism or hate or any other struggles that we encounter in our day-to-day -day lives. So be kind to yourself in this process and also understand that it's going to change what fills your cup, how you respond, um, and how you enfranchise others. It will change, and you being able to recognize that about yourself because you have that awareness about your authentic self will enable you to do this last 
a key takeaway, which is spread sanctuary in action. Um, spread the filling of your cup to others and speak up for others when you know that they can't and you can and enable, let your authentic self enable you to speak truth to power. The last thing I want to leave you with is just a note about an organization that I'm developing with my business partner who is in education. We are both indigenous and looking to create sustainable intergenerational wealth creation for indigenous communities and other communities who have been historically overlooked. Um, so we encourage you to look for Osotami International coming soon. Osotami means Bear Mountain in Yaki. Um, the Bear Paw Mountains are located in Montana. That's where I began my career as an entrepreneur. It is a place that my business partner visited regularly um, throughout his life and is still very connected to. So we named this organization after some of the people um, that have inspired the work that we seek to do. So I really thank you so much for inviting me to be here today and allowing me to spread a little bit of my truth and for you to help me fill my cup. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.